Hi there, John here. So in this video, we're going to create the IoT network. So let's start by updating our network plan. So what we're going to do is from our last open port on the open sense, that was our trunk, we're going to connect that to port 20 on our switch. And then with our second net card that we, we set up that we're going to use for virtual machines I'm going to use so the second port and we'll plug it into port 16 on the switch we'll use the IP address 192.168.10.1 okay so the black cable I'm going to use as the trunk port uh, cable so I'm going to plug that into port 20 of the managed switch then the blue cable I'm going to use as the IoT uh, VLAN network so I'll plug that into port 16 of the switch if we go to the back of the server So the trunk will go in, the trunk cable will go into the last port of the OpenSense NIC that we set up. And then the blue cable will go in the, to the second port of the second NIC on the server. Okay, so now we'll log into the manage switch and we will set up the VLANs on those specific ports. So for this network, I'm going to use VLAN number 201. So for the ID, I'm going to type 201. And then for the name, I'm just going to call it lab underscore trunk. Then port 20, it will be tagged. So all VLANs that come from the router will be tagged on that port. And then in port 16 it will be untagged so we can click add and modify now the next thing i need to do since i'm using port 16 on the public network i need to remove that so that's vlan id 100 so what i'm going to do is type in 100 and it will uh, pop up with that so all I'm going to do is under port 16, I'm going to do it as not a member and then add slash modify. Okay, the next thing we need to do is tell the switch what is going to be the primary ID to use for that specific port. So any traffic that is going into port 16 that is not tagged will then be tagged with a specific VLAN ID. Yeah, so I'm going to change it to 201. And that's it, we are now completed uh, with setting up the network switch. The next step we need to do is create the VLAN. So I've logged into OpenSense. From here, we're going to go into interfaces, other types, and then choose VLAN. We'll click the plus button to add. Okay, so for the parent um, network, it's gonna be that trunk interface that we created in the previous videos. And then uh, just to show you, but under device, you can't just name it anything. There's a specific naming convention that you need to use, but I'll show you now. Uh, for the VLAN tag, we'll use 201, and then for description, I'm just going to call it IoT uh, VLAN. So now if you see, if we choose save, it's going to tell us that the name isn't correct. So what it wants is the word VLAN, all small letters, 
in number so in this case will be vlan 0 and then whatever else we want to uh, number when you call it so in this case it will be vlan 0 0.201 we can save and apply that next we need to go to assignments and we need to assign this new interface I'm just going to call it IoT. We can add that and save it. From there, we need to enable it. So we'll enable it. And now, if we scroll down, we need to give it the RP version 4 uh, address that we want. So we'll use the mask of 24 and then we'll put in that RP address that we want it. So the 192.168.10.1. You can save and apply that uh, just a note make sure that your trunk interface is us enabled so just choose interface trunk enable and then save it you don't need to change any other settings next we will go under services uh, DHCP version 4 and then IOT and we'll enable DHCP and we'll set the range in this case I'll set it 50 to 90 then we can save that from there we need to create the bridge so we'll log into proxmox for eni2 that's a network port that we're going to use for the the bridge so i'm just going to add a comment there so i know what it is and then we'll create a new linux bridge with these settings and just remember to make sure auto start is on and then also for the trunk uh, just make sure that vlan aware is also ticked on we did do that in the previous videos if we check up uh, we should see that eno is now enabled and running so to add a vm to this network all we have to do is under the network we need to just set it to be in this case vm br5 the iot network we can then start up the virtual machine i'm just going to go to the terminal and do an R top ip address you will see we now get a an ip address from the dhcp server on the iot network so in this case we get 10.51 okay so now if we try access the internet for example let's go to google.com you'll notice that it will not work because by default when you create a new network all traffic to is blocked so we need to go and create the firewall rules for it so a nice way to set it up is to first create aliases. So aliases is just a nice way to group things together. So the first alias we'll create, I'm going to call it admin ports. And these will be the ports of the OpenSense admin UI. So it will be port 80 and then 443. So I'll use this alias to block the IoT devices from accessing uh, OpenSense. So we'll save that. I'm going to do this again, so we'll add a new network. For this one, we'll call it IoT Allowed App Ports. So this will be all the ports that we will allow the devices on the IoT network to access. So in this case, we'll let only web access or HTTP and HTTPS access. So that's port 80 and then 443. Doing it this way, we can easily add ports here for any new network that we want to be available to the IoT network. So we'll save that. And then we'll create one more. I'm going to call it local subnets. And I'm going to put in the subnets um, of the networks that we will be using on our network. So in this case, it will be all the 192.168 networks. And then we also do the 10.0.0 .0 .0 networks. 
and we can save that um, oh, just remember to set it to networks not hosts and we can apply that so if we go to rules and then click on IoT so the first rule we'll create is the rule to block the access to the uh, OpenSense admin UI so for action we'll choose reject for RP version we'll choose 4 and 6 for source we'll choose IoT network so any device on the IoT network and then for destination we'll choose this firewall we need to set the protocol to TCP and UDP and then for the ports we will choose the um, admin ports alias we can give it a description and then hit save okay the next um, rule that we'll create will be the rule to allow HTTP and the HTTPS traffic out from the IoT network so we're allowed to pass protocol which is TCP UDP for source again will be from the IoT network and then we're going to set inverted so any traffic that is not pointing towards a local network that is destined from port 80 or in this case uh, 80 or 443 so the ports that we allow out of the WAN and then for the gateway we'll choose the Surfshark VPN because I want them to only be able to um, have access to the internet through the VPN we can save that now I want to show you how it looks for blocked traffic so the first thing I want to do is just add the firewall log widget to the home screen it's just easier to see what's happening If we go to the firewall logs, we can see that in this case DNS is getting blocked on the IoT network and you need DNS. So we're going to create a new rule and I want all the DNS to still be redirected to an unbound DNS so that I can still use block lists on the IoT network. So we'll do protocol UDP for the source again will be IoT network. The destination will be this firewall and then it will be the DNS and just like we did with the in the last um, video I want to make sure that any DNS requests that are not going to our network to be redirected to our unbound service So under the port forwarding, I'll just add the IoT network to it. And then for the destination, we need to change it to um, any address that will be inverted. Again, any address that is not in our local subnet in this case, we want to be forwarded back into our uh, local DNS. we can save and apply so now if we go back to our IoT firewall rules you will see that OpenSense automatically created a floating rule for us to allow the redirection to happen so now if we go back to the live view and we allow to auto refresh you'll see now that um, DNS shouldn't get blocked on that network so now we can test and make sure it works so we'll log into our VM again and we should be able to access web pages now so in this case I'll search using DuckDuckGo and we'll search for example yay and we should get results if we look at our uh, live view of the firewall again, we shouldn't see anything getting blocked. Yeah. 
but just like in the previous videos if we want to now go and do a speed test so we'll use ukla again in this example you will see that it won't be able to find a server or if we run the speed test it just won't work it won't load and if we check the firewall rules or, or the logs why and just like on the previous video we'll see that port 8080 is blocked so Ookla can't do the speed test so the beauties of using aliases is we can just go back to the allowed ports for the IoT alias and we can just re-add port 8080 now if we go back to our virtual machine and reload the speed test you'll see that it will work now so port 8080 will be allowed through Ookla will be able to find a server and then be able to do the speed test and again as you can see it's um, found a server in London because we are using all, all the internet traffic is going through our VPN So I would recommend playing around and getting used to the alias feature just because it makes it so much easier to add or remove ports um, instead of having to create lots of different firewall rules you can create one firewall rule and then just add or remove what you want and it's very quick to update yeah so just as a last test we'll see if we try ping google You'll see obviously it won't work because we aren't allowing ICMP out. So pinging from the IT network won't work, which is what I want. I want to block that. And then just to double check that our rule is working to block access to the OpenSense uh, UI, the admin UI. If we try access it, so 10.1, it will not let us in. And if we try the 10.0.0.1, like we're currently on, you'll see it will be blocked. Now, I haven't added the log settings. So if we go into the rules, IoT, and anything that we want logged, we just click on the I icon to enable login. So now, if that firewall rule is uh, activated or hit, should I say, it will pop up. So if we test this again, so I'll refresh and I'll just go back and try the 10.1 and refresh that. You'll see now in the logs, it is working. That rule is triggering and it's blocking the access. So I hope this helped you. This will be the last video that I'll do with regards to setting up the networks because all the previous videos I've done and uh, this video, it's kind of repeating itself in it's the same process that you use. So I would uh, encourage you to now go and create your own networks. For example, create a home network and a business network using the knowledge you've learned from this and previous videos the next videos i'll be focusing more on things like ids so intrusion detection systems and the rps intrusion prevention systems on OpenSense. and then i also like to go into more of the gateways so how do you do the backups and the load balancing and things like that and then we'll also go into more monitoring the systems but uh, until then, I'll see you in the next one.